Why don't you stand with me? Before, before we open up the service, I want you to raise your hand if you're here today and tonight, and the Lord has just done a work in your life this weekend. Well, look, look around. This is awesome. This section over here, this is really awesome. You know what? Is there anybody who's willing to come up and, and share for just a few minutes? Or just a, just a few words, what God has done in your life. Don't take too long, but one or two people. I want to hear a testimony before we even get started. Let, your, let the morning bring word of your unfailing love. I want you to know that sorrow lasts for the night, but joy comes with the morning. And I want you to know this morning God broke something in this place. And this, and this night, God wants to pour out his spirit in your life so that you can be free, so that your spirit won't be faint, but your spirit will rise up within you, and you will be led by the spirit. And you will, the, the psalmist says, those who set their heart on pilgrimage after God, they pass through the valley of Baca, and they make it a place of springs. God is saying that he will, he will pour out his spirit upon you and you will walk through dry and weary places. And what will follow you is rivers of living water. It's a supernatural move of the spirit. So Holy Spirit, we say come and have your way. Father, we worship you. Jesus, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we make room for you. We say have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way. Do what you want to do. We never want to be the same again, God. Lord, we love you. Thank you for all that you have done and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen.
to sing a song. Just begin to sing a song unto the Lord right now. Just begin to tell him that you love him.
song for a new day. It's a new song for a new day. It's a new song for a new day.
Do you hear the bell, says the Lord? Do you hear a, a trumpet, says God? What's it for? To bring you to attention. To let you know that God is reigning in your circumstances. He is still God on the throne. The bell is ringing. For you it is a bell of victor victory. To others it's a bell of threat and dismay and heartache. But not to you, says the Lord. There is a trumpet sound. Now listen, says the Lord. Arise. Arise, says God. Bring yourself before me and allow me to attune you to the ear of heaven. For you are citizens of heaven, not citizens of earth. Do not attune yourself to the sound of the earth. Shamrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bend because they knew there was a different sound that they would bend to. Clarity, understanding, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning spirit will flow in my people. They will know the voice of the shepherd distinctly and they will not move until they hear him. This is what God will do by his spirit amongst you Emmanuel is his name the God that is with us how can you not rejoice says the Lord everything's provided hear the bell wake up hear the bell Father, we just thank you tonight for the mightiness of your name. Lord, the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, every, everything of darkness must flee away because you are here, Lord, and you are in this house. I just believe God is awakening souls tonight. There's some of you, you've been like, it's like you're in a body bag. Spiritually, you've been in a body bag, and the Lord's just coming along. He's unzipping body bags tonight. The Holy Spirit's unzipping body bags. And he's speaking to the dry bones in your heart. He's speaking to your, the dry hearts, and He's saying, Come to life. Come to life. Come to life. For too long, you've been in a slumber. For too long, you have been in a place of death when it comes to the things of God. And the Lord is saying, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm bringing forth a church. I'm bringing forth a people. I'm bringing forth a remnant that will rise up and begin to move and begin to be and begin to operate in the fullness of my spirit. And the Lord's just coming. And for some of you, I know this is a little bit, it's a little bit like, whoa, these guys are little, are little whatever it's like old time Pentecostal or something but understand our hearts we believe that the God of heaven and earth is on the throne and we believe that he's come to bring his kingdom here on this earth and we believe that there's an outpouring of his spirit to come we believe that we can see a transformation of a people we believe we can see a transformation of a city we believe we can see a transformation of a province we believe we can see a transformation of a country and all it takes is a remnant all it takes is a few that would rise up and say Lord I'm in I'm in I'm in whatever it might look like whatever it might cost God God. Lord, just, just, just pour out your spirit in me and through me, God. Lord, just have your way in me. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We just love you, Jesus. I just prophesy awakening over souls tonight. Awakening over souls tonight. 
Hallelujah. Why don't we just give him an offering of praise right now. Just begin to praise him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Well, why don't, we, uh, why, don't we, why don't you be seated before I start prophesying again? We'll... We're paying, we're paying, we're paying uh, Justin to be here, so we're going to make him work. <laughs> just ex excited tonight. Uh, just excited for what God's doing in, 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 life of, uh, in our lives and the life of this church. And um, we're just... Uh, Thank you for coming out and uh, being part of this, and um, yeah, it's been great. Um, here at Cheers, we don't take up a traditional offering, but there are offering plates in the back, and you're, lo you're more than welcome to throw all your money in. Thank you, Danny. Um, <clears throat> for this amazing service that we just had, um, I was struggling connecting with God for the past month and a half, so I just haven't felt anything um, while everyone else is praying and getting in touch with them. I'd kind of just sit there like, come on, God, give me something. Like, it's just not there. And <laughs> I felt something I haven't felt in a long time, and it feels so good. So thank you. <laughs> thank God. Mr. Manzi, why don't you come and uh, do your thing? One, four. Oh, there you go. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. All right. Whew. That was good. It's always dangerous when the Spirit of the Lord moves like that because, boy, the gifts get stirred. And when the gifts get stirred, whew, the people that have hospitality want to be hospitable. The people that, want, that have encouragement, they want to encourage. But the people that have prophetic, they want to prophesy. The people that have songs of the Lord, they want to sing songs. Something happens when your spirit gets stirred up. Amen? Amen. We don't come here and just sing karaoke worship. We follow the little dot. Dude, this is the way of the Lord. This is the way. It's like something happens where your spirit says, God, I want to connect with your spirits. I want my spirit to connect with your spirit. And when that happens... Our souls get a little nervous. Our bodies get a little nervous. You go, uh-oh. <laughs> what does this look like? Am I going to look strange? And then you have people looking around going, uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's about to get crazy in here. <laughs> I better find a corner quick. I don't know what's going to happen. But you know what? Here, here's what I'm going to say to you. There's a balance in all things. But when your flesh gets nervous, it's probably a good thing. Too many churches are so used to operating in the flesh that they're not sure when the Spirit comes what to do. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. I'm just saying that the reality is we come together and we worship our God. How many of you would have seen David dancing before the Lord where his robe falls off and he's dancing in his birthday suit and you go, that is inappropriate. His wife said that, and she was barren. Well, that seems kind of harsh, but there's something about that God says, I love when my people worship me. Now, here's what I'm going to say that. That doesn't mean it gives you a free uh, ticket to just move in the flesh and act stupid in your flesh. It needs to be out of your spirit, and there is a difference. But there's something about when God says, worship me in spirit and in truth. And he looks at the heart of the person and he says, I love you. Amen? Amen. 
So I said all that to say that I think I'm going to move in the prophetic. Hallelujah. So I, I just, uh, Earl, if you have some people that you want to, like, let's just be free to move a little bit. So grab a mic and we'll just kind of tag team some people. You know what I mean? Like, we can do that. We're in church. Hallelujah. <laughs> no. I just, um, I, you know what? David, right? Stand up. I'm just, let me pray for you and your wife. I know you love that. Hallelujah. But when you were up there praying and, and just, you know, I just, I, all I see was the back of your head. But I felt like the Lord just kept speaking something to me over and over. And, and, and what the word was, is right now you're in a place where it's almost what I sensed like a fogginess, an unclearness of what exactly do you want us to do and how to do it? That's just what I, and the, what I saw was, the words I saw was, it's time to yield and regroup. Yield, regroup. Yield, regroup. And what I got was, is timing, 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 timing. I don't know what that means, but those words I got. Regroup, yield, timing, timing, timing. And what I really sense right now that the Lord wants to bring is bring a clarity. I sense a clarity that God wants to bring. And that there's, you know, there are things in seasons where what I see over you is you will see a portion of something, a glimpse of something, and run full hard after the glimpse. <laughs> and, and there are times that you've seen the glimpse of it, and you're running full speed, and, and everybody's going, where are you going, Dave? You go, I, I got a glimpse! I got a glimpse! And, and, and what I sense, the Lord just says, I give you those glimpses so that I can show you what is to come, but there's a timing in all things. And you're in a season in your life where God wants to bring maturity to say when he gives you the glimpse that you stop and you say, Lord, what is the structure? What is the structure? How do you want to put the structure together? What do you want me to do? Why do you want me to do it? How do you want me to do it? Who do you want me to do it with? It's like a timeline that I see that the Lord wants to begin to bring you into where you're not running with, without all the people, without all the strategy, without all the structure. And so when, when I say that, it, this is a time to yield, regroup, re-strategize, and timing, mm -hmm. timing, timing. That's good. That's good. Have anything or you want to? A little bit, uh, yeah. Okay. I'll get to you, Kim. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> knowledge, 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 knowledge. Mm. Wisdom. Mm. Wisdom. Mm. you got to listen to it. Come on. Enemy comes in with a wedge and he goes, oh, I'm going to divide these two. Mm. I don't want them to act mm. together. Mm. And you know it's been happening. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I cut that thing. I cut that thing in Jesus' name. It's not going to happen. Mm. Jesus. Okay, God. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. God loves you. And he comes in sometimes for a little bit of discipline. But he does that because he so loves you. And it's not to make you out of place or anything else like that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Hey, we're be nice and then in this thing too. 38 years, you've got to have a few good ones. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't let him come in with the wedge. Mm -hmm. Okay? Here's the big thing, why he wants to do that. Because your prayers will be altered. It will be stopped. If you have aught with your husband, you have aught with your wife, God can't hear you. It's right in the Word. This is good for all of us. Okay? We're growing. This is a young couple, beautiful young couple. Man, what God's got for you guys is huge. God is growing you to the place where you can carry on great weight. What a great team you are. You are a great team. Honey? This is how you motivate a man. I'm a grandpa and I'm a counselor, so I'm going to give you a real good wisdom. Okay? <laughs> this is how you do it. You don't get in his face. He needs honor. 
So you go into the face of God and say, God, you know this, 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 and this. Can you talk to him? I guarantee you within an hour, God's talking to that guy. And he's in his face. He can't move out of the way. That's how a good life does it. You connect with God. Because there's wisdom there. Okay? It is. And this is for your good. Okay? Another thing that comes in, into my heart for you guys. The trees of righteousness, are they planted of men or God? They're planted of God. When God plants you down somewhere, it's for your good. God wants you to be so fruitful, make sure your roots go way down and say, come hell or high water. Oh, that pruning, that pruning, that pruning. Don't move. And I tell you, your family will be a noted family. Mm -hmm. You want that. Mm -hmm. Your marriage is going to be a noted marriage. Mm -hmm. All right? It's good. No, you can, I, I got mine. It's good. Thank Sorry. You. No, it's good. You, you have your own? <laughs> yeah, I got my own. My, Do you have issues? It comes with my face, I guess. <laughs> I, 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 I just want to affirm that. I, I, I felt like I wanted just to even move into where you guys grab hands. I believe that the enemy has truly tried to bring so much confusion and it's brought a fog over both of you to where you've began to question where you're at and what you're doing. I really believe that strongly. And, and what, I, what I see is over you, Kim, is that it... <laughs> There are things that you sense and feel, but there are times that you have laid down and you've just said, I just trust my husband. I'm here to support him. I'm here to support him. And in that, there's establishment that you have to trust each other in the area of where are you at and what are you doing? And I believe that this is a test for your marriage because there's, I just see so many dynamic, dynamics happening around you right now just a, it's, it's almost what I want to say is what I said before when it, things get out of orbit mm. things start spinning off and there's some things out of orbit right now and God wants to center you guys back yes. because there's such a passion Come and a on. genuineness in both of you I'm not questioning whether you love God. I know. I see it over you. I see it in, in your hearts the passion and the love for God it goes so deep but that can take, our passion can lead us where our character isn't ready and where our family isn't ready and our marriage isn't ready because our passion. And that's where I sense the regroup and coming to say, okay, God, timing. And you know what? If you have to regroup and re-strategize, that's not failure. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. And there are things that I, I don't know, I, I'm not in your room at night, good thing. But I think that Kim might even say, are you sure the timing of this? Are you sure the timing of this? Are you sure the timing of this? And it's coming in questions. And I think you guys need to do that pillow talk and simply say, come on, let's get into the center of God's will. When you're in the center, things just work for you. And when you're not, things spin off. I believe this is a regroup recenter and come back that lord i just pray yes for this couple i know you love them but you're at a crossroads i i really sense this right now i feel i just sense that a crossroads where you guys have been looking god speak to us what do we need to do how do we need to do this and so lord i pray right now right here right now right here Right now, right here, Jesus, mold them, yes. mold them, yes. mold them, oh. mold them. Put yourselves in the Father's oh. hands. Let him mold oh. you, mold you, mold you. That nothing comes in the way of the oneness of your marriage, the oneness of the calling that you have on your life. Nothing comes in between the oneness of of your marriage and who you are. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Not a ministry. Not an excitement. Nothing yes. comes into the... It, nothing comes...
to separate the oneness of your marriage. And if there's anything doing that, you remove that schism. Jesus, Jesus, yes. Fight yes. for the oneness of your marriage. Yes. Become teachable to one another. Teachable. Teachable. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, now I want you to really hold each other tight. There's something here. Both arms. Turn around. Okay. Okay, God. Jesus. There it is. Come on. Take it out. Out, out. The root out. The root out. There it is. Feel that, honey? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That's Jesus. Jesus. He is with you guys. Man, mm. he's with you guys. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Man, Man. fight the good fight, you guys. Jesus. Fight the good fight. Jesus. Devil stoppers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's good. Jesus. Is that orange? Is that my eyes? I, I'm, I'm an older fella, so sometimes I... Your name is? Carrie. Carrie? Yeah. Okay, he's not from the house, is he? No, no you're not from the house. No. Carrie, I, I, I can see your past, but God doesn't want to deal with that. No. He wants to deal with your future. future yeah. yeah. Jesus. You feel something inside your heart that where God's leading you? Jesus. Okay. Where's that? Tell me about that. Where's God leading me? Um, to a brighter future. Yeah, and what is that? Uh, ministry. <laughs> you know, the first time you came in here, God, God told me, there's my preacher, there's my preacher, there's my preacher, there's my preacher, there's my preacher. Jesus. You get into the book, son. You digest that thing. You tie a rope on the leg, and you, in your mind, Lower yourself down into Jesus. the pit and you mine the gold of heaven. You pull up the rubies and the emeralds and the jewels for the house Jesus. of God. You take that word and you eat it up. And God will put such an anointing on your life and take this insecurity out of you. Mm. He'll rip it right out of you. And you will orotate the house in Jesus. the house of God a beautiful word from God, Jesus. fresh fresh, not somebody else's, what Jesus. God gives you. Yeah. You are called a scribe. Jesus. Okay? You will rightfully divide the word of God. God is showing you your election and your calling. The Bible says, make sure, make sure, make it solid, your election and your calling. And tonight, Jesus. God's saying, what you know is now verified. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sit there and wave yeah. with your soul. That's your enemy. There's three enemies. The world, the flesh, and the flesh, and the devil. The first, the first and the last, you don't really have to worry about because God will beat them up. You have to worry about the flesh. So get into the Word. Get into the Word. Get into the Word. I can't say that enough. Okay? Hmm. What was your name again? Carrie? Yeah. Lord, I just pray right now for Jesus. Carrie. You know, even right now, I am going to mine a little bit in your past. So, can we like get out in front of the speaker so it doesn't feed me back a little bit there? <laughs> you know, I, I really see that There's been so many things that have pulled at you and pulled at you. And even in those areas that have caused you to feel like you were never complete, that you were never whole, that you were always striving and striving. But there is a season where God is bringing you into a restoration. But here, here, here's what I'm going to say to you in that restoration. 
There are, there, there are things right now where God is healing you and restoring you. Yeah. Healing and restoring you. Yeah. Healing you and restoring you. Healing and restoring you. I believe with all of my heart that you're going to learn how to digest the Word of God into your spirits. And you're going to have to be careful of digesting the Word into your intellect and then just uh, puppeting it out, just yeah. parroting it out, yeah. where somebody's just pulling a string in your neck and you're just mouthing it. Because you can mouth information, but God wants to begin to pour it into your spirit yeah. so it begins to marinate in His truth and marinate in His, His revelations. Because, you see, one of the things that God wants to work in you and through you is reconciliation, 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 reconciliation. That you will restore those who are far from God to God. Lord, I pray even right now for Carrie. That even those things of the past, those, those fears. Those fears. There are times that you have wanted to die. Literally. Just say, I don't want to be here. I don't want to exist. And in those moments... I mean, I, I just see moments like that that have made up and brought you to this place. But God has never allowed that to happen because the spirit of the living God has been wooing you. And it's a miracle. I, I, I see this. It's a miracle that you're standing right here, right now in front of us. There's miracles that have taken place. God is not a God who wastes his miracles. He invests them. He invests his miracles but he expects a return on them. And he's invested miracles into your life and over your life. Don't question your value. Lord, I pray for a supernatural understanding of who you are. Supernatural understanding. That bypasses his intellect and gives him a revelation that brings forth a transformation that will bring about a reformation. This is the season to be teachable. This is that season to be teachable, to learn, to learn, to be a sponge, learn, learn, learn. Learn, learn, grow, 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 grow. And right when you think you're going to vomit, if you learn anything more, swallow it and grow, 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 grow. Because there's going to come a time we go, okay, I have it. I have enough. And at that moment, you're going to remember my voice. I feel like I'm going to throw up if I hear any more of this. You swallow it. And you go, I'm, I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more of you, God. Listen, you have not been called to be a statistic. In fact, you're going to reach those who the enemy says, I will make them a statistic. And you say, not on my watch. 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 Wow. 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 Praise God. Bless you, man. Give me a hug and then you can shake his hand. Yeah. Or give us both hugs. Group hug. Yeah. Family church, right? We're getting too affectionate here for me. I'm a man. No, just kidding. Yeah. You want me to go or you want to go or what do you want to do? You go ahead. Okay. Mm. Yeah. How are we all doing? I know, you know, it's one of these things when you start moving like this, people are like, oh, are they going to do this to every person? Yeah. So <laughs> we're just kind of, Wow. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Lord, have your way. Jesus. 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 Hmm. Jesus. Wow. Hmm. Let's just wait for a moment. Jesus. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I'm just going to move over here to 
Okay, my, main, my brain just went dead. It's Chad, right? And Christy. Oh, Christy, yeah. Let's stand out. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Wow. You know what? People always say, you always say, wow, what does that mean? I don't know. It's just the first <laughs> word that comes to me. People are like, wow, that must be amazing. It is amazing. Because anytime God shows you things in people's life, it is amazing. But the first thing I get when I see you both is truth and compassion. Truth and compassion. Truth and compassion. Truth and compassion. And boy, does that make amazing things happen sometimes in your house and even with your children. Um, wow. Um, because truth wants order and compassion wants love. And you don't have to be so hard on my boys. And so, <laughs> but, but there is a beauty, there is a beauty in this marriage that, that goes beyond your house. Yes, it does. I really believe that truth always represents a pillar. It always represents holding up. It always represents holding up something, lifting up something. And I believe that that is over your life. A truth, 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 truth. But it, with that truth comes compassion, compassion, compassion. That he's made you both a pillar. Not just one pillar, but a pillar. That he never divides a couple when he calls them forward. But he wants them to work that together. So even in this house, house, there is truth and compassion that is needed. And that gift that you provide to this house is truly that. Truth yes. and compassion. Truth and and compassion. Truth and compassion. I really believe that there's another level that God is bringing you to. A whole nother level of what he wants to do in you and through you. That you have just started to scratch the surface and there has been moments where you minister, Chad, and where you minister, Christy, but I believe there are going to be, there, there's coming moments where even, I'm going to even challenge you to begin to do it, that when people come to the altar, that you guys begin to lay hands on together, and you're going to bring such a sweet word to that person that it's good, they're going to get the truth, but they're going to get that compassion, and it's going to mix into it, and it'll be like a word that's like cement. It'll be like it just... It it seizes them into, um, into their heart. But not only that, but I really believe that it will extend outside of the altar and it will be into your home. It is going to be where you go to people's homes and people come to you. But there, there is a life-giving spirit that God has given you. And that means that you are to give that to others. Strength, truth, yes. compassion, Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I get this vision, and I, I mean, I, I, the vision I get, I don't know. It's just like, I see, Christy, you're inviting some, a couple over, and you're hospitality, and inviting them in. Hey, it's good to see you. We love you. It's good to sit down. Why don't you come in our living room? And the whole time, Chad's going, now, when am I going to rebuke them and bring them into order? When am I going <laughs> to, how are we going to do this? You, like, it's good to see you. Sit down. Um, I hope you got the love from my wife. Get ready. And I, and I just, and, and it seems kind of harsh. I'm making you sound harsh, Chad, but I, uh, <laughs> that's what I see. So, but, but it doesn't, I, I'm not saying that you are harsh, but it's almost I see that team working together where it's just flowing as one team. And, and, and I just really sense that. And, and don't get me wrong, because I'm going to say this even as I see truth over you. Chad, I really do see you as compassionate. There's a deep, deep compassion in your heart. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying when I say that. Because when I see you, there is a compassion that sometimes you aren't... Um, how do I say this? Come across emotional or you, you hold your um, emotions as far as, but the, when you feel things, they're very, very deep, very deep. 
So don't misunderstand because when you're getting that truth, it's not because you don't sense a deep compassion because there are times that it, you, it, there, it has grabbed a hold of your heart. But what I mean by that is that there's a truth that you want to see people not just giving them finances. You want to see them free. You want to see, just, you want to see them set in a pattern where there's order so that they can continue to stay free. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So, Lord, I just pray. Jesus. Or you, you want to... Yes. I don't want to just start praying and... Please let me share. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, there's an affiliation in my heart for you. Jesus. Jesus. You know, it, it says that you can have brothers in the flesh, but sometime you meet men and immediately you feel like, there's my brother. And it, it seems like the Jonathan David. You are such a lovely man. And what a tremendous wife God has added to your life. Just compliments you. This is the word that God gives me. Father Abraham and many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. That's your life. It's not only your kids, but many kids. You put your arm around their neck, and they love you, and they try to squirm, and you go a little tighter, and they try to squirm, and they go a little tighter. You will listen to me. I have vase. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Such a presence of Father on you. That's right. It's the Elisha spirit. God spoke it. He says, in the last days, I'll pour my spirit upon the fathers that they be drawn to the children. Upon the children that they be drawn to the fathers. And then you go to Psalms and says, so that your young men might be grown up in their youth. Mm -hmm. And your daughters set like stones in the similitude of a palace, mm -hmm. reflecting the full glory of God. Mm -hmm. You have many teachers, but very few fathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, here's another somewhat of a warning, a little flag. Trees of righteousness are planted of the Lord. We don't move until we hear God audibly. <laughs> you put the tree roots down. Okay? You hear the shepherd. God is going to give you some real clarity. Real understanding. The eyes of your understanding are going to be opened. The ears of your understanding are going to be opened. And you're going to hear things. It is going to be a prophetic thing. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, mainly discerning. Mm -hmm. You're just going to know where they're at. Yeah, and you're just going to feel like it's natural. That's right. I know where that kid's at. Mm -hmm. I remember one kid in our church messing around, stealing cars. His dad just said, I've had it. Started taking him for coffee. Now he's a pastor. You're the man. Mm. Yeah. And I just, I just want to affirm that again. Just what I, what I, what I see is Father. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I see that there is a prophetic that you need to stir up more. And, and a discernment. That, that, that is a gift God has given you. And, and here's the deal. If you don't use it correctly, you'll become critical. And, and that's what happens. It's just the shadow side of it. And, and it doesn't mean it's like, oh... And that, that's that truth and compassion again. You'll say, well, you know, honey, I tell you what I see right now. And she's like, well, you just got to give him some grace, honey. And, you know, I mean, just be there. You know, maybe you're always so pessimistic on those things. And, and so there's that thing. But you're like, oh, okay, maybe. But you know what? There is a genuine prophetic yes. and discernment that's strong in you. Yes. But I sense it needs to be stirred up. 
And there's sometimes you can't, you don't always know the difference between discernment and being critical. And you're like, well, I don't want to be critical anymore. And I, I see you fighting that because there's that father heart of, uh, of wanting to have that truth. With, but you know what? As you lean into God, you will be able to discern, am I being critical or am I, do I have discernment and do I need to bring, bring truth to this? Maybe it's just by praying at times, but that's what a father does. And, and not only that, are you a father, but I'm going to tell you something. You're a watchman. You're a watchman. You're a watchman. And so if you're not up on the wall watching, then what happens is you feel like you're down on the ground and you just begin to, you, you'll just become the critical. How come nobody sees anything around here? How come, you know, you, it'll just happen. And so when you're put into that place where God wants to use you, it'll just flow and it'll work good. And I don't want you to think, Christy, that you're a nag. I'm not saying that. We've got to minister to you. You're not. You are a beautiful That's gift. Best gift. You, you are a beautiful gift. And I'm, I, want, I want to just hone in on this, that you really are. You, you have a special, unique gift to be able to. You really want people to experience the love. You want them to, to, to receive a joy and a peace. There is a gift that you bring that I just truly want you to know you set the table often. You set the table, and what I mean by that is not just for dinner because nobody else will do it, but, but, but in spiritually speaking, you set the table often. You just, you, you come and, and you set that table and you make people feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Use that gift. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Don't be afraid when people start calling you mom and dad that aren't your kids. Be open to it. It's healthy. Mm. There's kids out there without it, mm. and they need to identify. Mm -hmm. It's a healing process. Mm -hmm. So if a teenager comes up to you and says, Mom, what do I do with it? Just mm -hmm. take it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might be hard at first. You're not my son. My son wouldn't look like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and daughters. Yay. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Amen. All right, Lord, I just pray, bless Jesus. this couple. Yes. Lord, you, these, this is your son and your daughter. Lord, yes. you love them. And I just pray, Lord. God, that you would, uh, you, are the com you are the completion and the finisher of them. You've begun this work in them. And that which you've begun, you are faithful to complete. You are faithful to complete. You are faithful to complete. Wow. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <laughs> Jesus. You knew I was coming. You knew I was coming. I, I see this. Um, in the Bible, it says that there was a man who had friends come to his house and he was out of bread. And he went to the neighbor's house and it was after the hours and he banged on the door. Can you give me a loaf of bread? I've got visitors. I got visitors. Go away. We're in bed. Our kids are in bed with us. Go away. And he hammered and he hammered and he hammered on that door till there was a relentless pounding on the door. The bread came through the door and said, now just go away. Some people get things immediately. They just come in. Some people have to persevere. You've got to get a hold of God. It's not going to come any other way. God wants to bless your socks off. But where you stand right now, it wouldn't work. God wants you to persevere, persevere. Knock, 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 knock. She knows. I, I, I see that scripture that's, that's so important for us men because I'm, I'm like this too. I have to knock a lot before God says, okay, I'll talk to you. Because there's something in us that God wants to bring out. 
And that's our self-assurance, our self-reliance, my teeming brain. Man, I can do it. Watch me. I'm going to give you something unique. God is coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. The eastern viewpoint of that is this. White, yes. But in the eastern bride, she had a little wrinkle in her clothes that she turned around and her dowry was in there. And when she got married, she went into her husband's house, took the dowry out and gave it to her husband's dad. God is coming back for a bride without a spot or a wrinkle. He doesn't need our provision. He doesn't need our doing. He wants to do it. There's something God wants you to learn in that. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by how you can put it together. If you spend just a little bit of time before God say, God, give me clarity how to do this. God, I put you first. I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my strength, with all my might, and everything that was in me. And God, I put this before you first. Holy Spirit, you are responsible for me. Jesus went to the right hand of the Father that the Comforter might come and build the church. I'm part of that. So Holy Spirit, you're responsible for me. I give you my life. God, what you're calling me into and what I'm doing with my hands, you want to bless. You feel it. But it just doesn't happen. You just have to weed, 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 weed. Oh man, why doesn't this work? God says, get connected in me. Get a hold of the Holy Spirit first thing in the morning. What I used to do is get in the mirror. Cognitive therapy, they call it. In the Bible it says, think on these things. And I look in the mirror in the eye gate of my soul. I said, Earl, come on. It's in him you live and move. Come on, soul. Look at David. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Listen, soul, I could give a rip how you feel. Now you get your hands up and get your mouth open because I'm the boss here. Not you, flesh. The violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. My flesh will submit to the Lord God, my, my God. You start moving in that realm and the ministry that's call, you're called to that area, that whole area, all of a sudden, bang, 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 effortless. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and it adds no sorrow. You can bless somebody, but somebody else that says, what about me? Am I chopped liver? <laughs> God wants to pour into you, but he doesn't want you to build barns. He wants you to be a pipe. And a massive one at that. God's pulling her and tugging her to pray, pray on your behalf. Because she knows she's married a mighty man. She knows she's married a mighty man. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things to come. There's something in her. Don't let a wedge get in here either. You are to be together. I just, uh, I just get clarity and unity. That I, I, I really believe that there's some things that you're asking for clarity in, and and there's needs to become a unity. So I just get those two words, that there has been a fog that has kept you in a place where you're, you're walking where it feels like it's blind. And I just sense, even right now, that you're asking for the fog to clear up, and you're looking for clarity, and you're looking for uh, to come into unity. But he, he, here's what I sense, is that the Lord, you keep walking around in the fog and asking for clarity, and, and God, we want to be in unity with you, but what, what I sense is the Lord says, no, no, that's not how I do it. I actually pick you up out of the fog, and I rise, I, I, I raise you up above it so that you can see with clarity. 
But what our natural reaction in our flesh is to get down on the ground in our hands and knees and try to figure our way out through the fog. And, and so we don't, you know, hit things in the night, you know. Um, but the Lord just says, that's not how I do it. I actually... I actually come beneath you like a strength and a, a wind, and I, I raise you above the fog. I bring you to my viewpoint. I bring you to my viewpoint so that you can see clearly. And so I just sense that there needs, there's, there's a clarity that you've been asking for, but I, in that clarity, there's a unity that has to come between you. A unity that, that you are linked together as, and, and, and I, I sense that as that unity is strong, um, that is when clarity will come because in unity, God will raise you up and give you insight of those things that you're looking for. That you don't have to stumble around in the dark and in the fog. And say, oh, God, come and meet me where I'm at. God, come and meet me where I'm at. God, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. God says, well, why don't you draw near to me? Come meet me and come, to see, come and see where I, where I see it from. Come and see my perspective. And I, and I really sense that there's just been moments that you have been walking through and saying, oh, God, look at how big these mountains are. God, look at what this is. And, 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 and you have been telling God how big your mountains are. Mm -hmm. And God is, wants to say to you is stop telling me how big your mountains are and start telling your mountains how big I am. <laughs> that, like, y y we have it backwards yeah. in, in what's happening here. And so I really sense that there's a new perspective and 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 there's this thing that the lord wants to just shake off of yeah. you so that you can get that clarity and get out of that funk i don't know what that funk is like you know funk i hope you know what that word i don't know look it up but you know what i'm talking about and and and, and i really believe that god wants to bring you into the light yes. there it is. it's going to give you peace of mind clarity and that fogginess is going to lift off of your, your brain, off of your spiritual life, and you're going to get the insight that you're asking for. Wow. Jesus. Now the word comes to me that I needed at the start that I couldn't remember. Importunity. You take and write that word and put it on the top of your mirror so when you shave every morning... Importunity. Importunity is I knock, I knock, I knock, I knock. I am relentless like you, God. You've made me in your image. God, I knock. God, I need you to bless me that I might be a blessing. God, in your provision for my life, I'm going to have a full cup. God's going to give you a full cup, and it's going to overflow for others. But first, he's going to fill your cup. For the two of you, Jesus loved the church and gave his life. You need to really enhance Jesus. You Jesus. need to honor your husband, and I see that you do. You need to love your wife. Jesus. Just like she, what you, you were just dating. You've got to start dating this woman. Listen to yeah. me, this is important. Because where you're going, you're going to get busy. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to you have your priorities in place. Yeah. She is going to have to be number two after God. Yeah. Because business is business is business is business is business. Mm -hmm. But this is part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to release you. Mm. from that anxiety. Mm. I'm going to mm. release you from that tension. Mm. There's security coming, dear. It's in mm. God. Mm -hmm. It's in God. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Mm -hmm. For such a time as this, God mm -hmm. is raising up ministries. Jesus. 
And there's nothing secular, sir. What you put your hands to is ministry. The house of God needs businessmen mm -hmm. that have a full cup that flows over. Mm -hmm. I watched it in our previous church. Mm -hmm. I watched people like Ron Fair give 140000 off every quarter to the house of God. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, my, no. When he left to help another church, he gave that church $2 million and said, here, you need a new building. Wow. In God, everything is impossible. Mm -hmm. Everything. In Him, mm -hmm. I live and move mm -hmm. and have my bearing being. Knock, 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 knock. Importunity. Mm -hmm. Let it jingle in your head all day. Mm -hmm. It's a catchy word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to just sum that for what I just, just saw that with is that I just really believe to do two things. Pursue God, pursue your wife, and God will pursue you, and things will begin to pursue you. But if you begin to pursue things, wow. then you will be just distracted and disoriented. Mm -hmm. But if you begin to pursue God and pursue your wife, God will pursue you, and opportunities that God has for you will pursue you. Mm -hmm. Whatever you pursue begins to pursue you. Pursue God, pursue your wife, mm -hmm. and watch how when you bring that into order, but how God brings that into order for your life. Amen? All right. Does this testify to you? Yeah. <laughs> Go do the right thing. All right. <laughs> no, that's good. Praise God. Okay. Are you okay? Should we have a ministry? We can. We could. Hey. Ruby, how do you feel? Rise among us. That song's been <laughs> in my heart all night. Did... Okay, let's do that. How many know that song that I don't know the title of? Um, is it old? This is what I do to my wife all the time. I'll say, honey, that song that has, you know, the Holy Spirit in it. <laughs> There's a few of those songs. Um, I, th I think Bernie and Peter know it. <laughs> Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Yeah. I won't sing it for you because you might be scared. Well, honey, come up here.
just ask that even now in this place, your word says that in, in the last days that your glory will fill the earth. That means that your glory is going to fill your people. Lord, I pray even right now that the glory of the Lord rise among us. Because you are worthy of all glory, all honor, all praise. And we declare that we serve a God who is glorious. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let it rise. We receive that. We want to walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. I, I'm going to just share. I know it's, you said share. What the, what are you talking about? What church are you in tonight? Don't get scared. I'm, I'm just going to share briefly that we're going to open up the altar uh, to continue to pray for people. Th this um, weekend was called Worship and Prophecy. So you guys are coming on the last night, <laughs> which is good. We're glad you came. Um, we started on Friday, and we did Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and now here we are. And as you know, there's so many ways and places we could go with this. But here's been the theme of this whole weekend. Two words. Surrender and trust the Lord. 